Welcome into the latest edition of ESPN SC. I'm Dan Thomas, joined in the studio today by Shaka Hissop and Stevie Nicol. And if that wasn't enough, joining us from Paris is Frank LeBeuf. And from Madrid, Alex Kirkland is with us. And we'll start with you, Alex, because, of course, the January transfer window is open. Kylian Mbappe is a free agent at the end of this season. Let's start off with the fact that do Real Madrid actually want him, given that he's already turned them down twice? Well, at least twice. I've lost count of how many times we've been. Surely it's more than two, isn't it? It's three or four. It's been every <laughs> summer for the last, I think it's the last three years. Um, look, I think Madrid are still, of course, they're still interested. There were one or two stories before Christmas about were Madrid, you know, backing out of the race for Mbappe. I, I was never too sure about that, to be honest. I think a player of that calibre, if, if they're available, and Mbappe right now at least, six months left in his contract, he is available. Yes, Madrid are interested. Yes, Madrid are lacking uh, a striker. Yes, the Madrid number nine shirt is literally vacant right now. So, so yes, they're interested. Whether that interest translates into Mbappe being unveiled at the Bernabeu this summer is a, is a different question, I guess. Uh, Frank, we've seen you over the years quite anti-Real Madrid. Even when they were winning the Champions League, you didn't think they deserved it. And then you've said for a long time now, Kylian Mbappe shouldn't go to Spain. However, a couple of days ago, you backtracked and you've changed your mind, yes? Yes, I did. And <laughs> I never said what you uh, just said, but uh, I said that uh, Real Madrid has been very lucky to win the Champions League the last time they won, except the final. But before, against Paris Saint-Germain, against Chelsea and against Manchester City, they, was, they were very lucky. But whatever. They, they won it, so they deserved it. But uh, as, what a backhanded that compliment that was. Mbappé, <laughs> Yeah, 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 whatever. But the thing is, uh, is I, I said that Kylian Mbappe um, decided to, uh, to, to get a challenge with uh, Paris Saint-Germain. And it's understandable. He was, he's from Paris and he wants to take that challenge. And, uh, um, and you, you can understand that um, it's maybe more important for him that they're going to Real Madrid. How involved you're going to put him, how Ancelotti is going to, is going to make sure that he's going to be involved defensively to work hard when he loses the ball. That's the main question mark that I have. Now, I don't have the answer. Vinicius Junior plays on the left side. Kylian Mbappé is the best in that same position. Uh, so there are questions that I want to answer before he signs. But I think if there is an opportunity and that he feels that it's maybe the right time because nothing's going to happen with Paris Saint-Germain, I think he has the right to, uh, to go there. Uh, Alex, obviously this is quite a tight-knit side, Real Madrid. You don't hear too many stories of any problems within the locker room. Could Kylian Mbappe's arrival change that? I mean, potentially. It's always, it's always tricky, isn't it, when such a big star comes into a dressing room, such a highly paid star comes into a dressing room as well, because he would be the highest paid player at Real Madrid by some distance if he came in. I think the top earners right now are, are people like uh, Cross and, uh, and Aleb, uh, uh, Belling and Vinicius a little bit further down the down the scale. So, yeah, that might ruffle one or two feathers, but ultimately, no, Real Madrid's players would love to play with Kylian Mbappe. Players want to play with the best players, don't they? They, they want to have stars in their team and, and to be around them. And this is, a, I think, an exciting Real Madrid project right now. You look at this team, it's a young team, it's a growing team. Uh, you've got players like, like Bellingham, uh, you've got Mbappe's France teammates like Chouameni and Camavinga, you've got the Brazilians Vinicius and Rodrigo. I think it's a great team to come and be a part of. And no, a lot of these players, some of them have said it, some have hinted at it over the last year, a few years, they would love to play with Mbappe. They want a player of that quality in their side. And, and Carlo Ancelotti is probably the ideal coach uh, for a player who, you know, increasingly maybe looks like a little, might be a little bit difficult to, to handle. We've seen that with Luis Enrique. We've seen it with previous PSG coaches as well. But Ancelotti, I think, and having just signed a new contract, Ancelotti as well until 2026, might be the, the right man to, to manage that, that kind of thing. So now ultimately from both sides, I think if you can, if you can do this, no, the, the players would love to see him come and join. Makes sense, Angelotti, the right man to kind of help him, guide him. Yeah, a guy with his experience. Um, as far as the locker room is concerned, there's, there's only one criteria, and that's that you pull your weight. Right. That's it. That's the bottom line. Anybody, regardless of how much anybody's making, if you pull your weight, then you're fine. Define and, pull your weight. Well, define pull your weight. Well, Cristiano Ronaldo would be the perfect example. Cristiano Ronaldo, we all know and they all knew that 90% of the time, let's play for him, let's get him the ball, he'll produce. But the key is that Ronaldo also played for them. He clearly played for them. Set pieces against, you would see him head on balls away. You would see him chasing people down. 
you would see him running for his teammate. And when your superstar is running for you as well, I'll tell you what, that whole team runs more for him. And that's what makes everybody successful. That's why Cristiano was so successful, because he gets everybody in to play for him. But he's also playing for them, that's the key. I, I think the only thing that players care about is that you fit in, that you're a part of the team. To, to, to that point, if somebody comes in, like Kylian Mbappe, and is making a whole lot more, it can actually work in, in my favour. If I'm Jude Bellingham, for argument's sake, and Kylian Mbappe comes in and is making twice as much as I am, but then I go next season and I outscore Kylian Mbappe, I'm looking forward to, to that conversation <laughs> with, with, with Florentino Perez. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So it, it, it can prove a, 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 an encouragement to, to the rest of the dressing room in terms of if I play well, this is the kind of money I could be earning. Uh, the sooner this is done, the better for everyone's sanity, isn't it, Alex? Certainly for mine, and probably for yours as well, and yes, certainly for, for Real Madrid, because look, this is, this is one of the longest-running sagas that anybody can remember. And Madrid want it done this month, ideally in the first half of this month, if it were going to be done, because remember, what Madrid really want, whether he comes or whether he doesn't, what Madrid are desperate to avoid is being embarrassed again, is being messed around again, because frankly, they were messed around. Um, certainly two years ago, and to a certain extent the year before that and, and last year, as well, it, it was. It's embarrassing for a club like Real Madrid. You know, Real Madrid. Their their outlook is, you know, you don't say no to us. You don't turn us down. If we want you, you you come, and you certainly don't say that you're going to come and then end up not coming. Like I say, it was it was embarrassing. It was a little bit uh, humiliating. I don't, I don't think that's a stretch to to say that. And so they want to make sure whatever happens, if it's coming or not, I think there's some resolution there. There's some clarity there. If they get it, if it's done, it's signed. The contracts are signed. There's no backing out because that was the problem last time. They're relying on the player's word essentially. And in the end, the player went back on his word and changed his mind. It can't happen again, can it, Alex? They want this done, of course, before the end of the month. Yeah. Well, like I said, the difference this time with six months left, of course, is that there's no, there's no wiggle room really for Mbappe. There's no reason for Mbappe to say, let's try and sort of delay it. Let's give it excuses as to why he wouldn't want to get it done. Like I say, if he's going to come, we'll sign a contract. You can sign a pre-contract agreement. The terms are there, the same terms that were agreed back um, yeah, previously when he was on the brink of of joining. So like I say, what, what excuse could he give really? I, I, he needs more time or whatever. I don't think Madrid would accept that. I think it's, look, if you want to come, like I say, let's sign the contract. Let's get it there in, in, in black and white. And so there's no room for manoeuvre. There's no possibility of, of, of more embarrassment, of more hesitation, of more kind of arm twisting from, from PSG as well. Uh, meanwhile, of course, Real Madrid interaction tomorrow, the first game of the year, Alex. And speaking ahead of that, Carlo Ancelotti was inevitably asked, not, well, about Mbappe, where he just said, shut up, I'm not talking about it. But he was also asked uh, about what was going to happen. At this moment, we aren't considering signing another centre-back. We're lacking important players, but we have another two who we believe in, Nacho and Rudiger, and two others who can play there, uh, Chiuameni and Carver House. So right now, we aren't considering a signing. But what? just sign someone, Alex. What are they doing? Well, Real Madrid don't like don't like acting like that. They don't like kind of um, going against the the plan. They don't like panicking or hurrying or kind of emergency signings. They only do it when it's absolutely necessary, like when they brought in Kepa in the summer. Um, so they think, look, we've got, like I said, we've got Nacho. Um, Nacho's a, a, a very good player. We've got Rudiger having probably the best season of his Real Madrid career to date in brilliant form, Rudiger. And they're going to muddle through. If they have to, they've got two many who can come in and, and do a job. Edi Militao should be back from his ACL tear maybe towards the end of March. Now, that's that's a, that's a while away, but enough perhaps to contribute at least until the end of the season. Of course, Alaba's going to be out until until next season. But it's difficult in January, like the right sort of player that you might want isn't necessarily available. Like You don't want to make a kind of an impulse buy that you end up regretting committing yourself to a player that you don't necessarily want. So I think they'd rather, and this is more the club maybe than Ancelotti. I think Ancelotti would have quite liked to bring a player in. But the club are saying, no, look, let's stick with what we've got. Let's stick with plan A and let's get through it. And let's hope that Rudiger and Nacho uh, stay fit at least until Militao's back. Right, Steve, let's talk very quickly as well so that it doesn't look like Alex Kirkland's internet is bad and it's just that everybody's talking <laughs> fast today and I think that'll all be fine. The problem is, surely, is that you are really down to the bare bones. You're fighting for the Champions League as well and La Liga. So what are you going to do? Well, if you're Real Madrid, <laughs> it's really... It, it doesn't make any sense. So you're going you're gonna to gamble the Champions League and La Liga because you don't want to go and get some cover. That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. The, None. The only, the only way this makes sense for me is, is, is that Real Madrid are preparing some kind of a war chest for Kylian Mbappe and feel that bringing in somebody kind of eats away at that 
anticipating what it'll cost both in transfer fee and, and in salary. That, that's the only thing that makes any kind of sense to me. And what we've seen over the years, Carlo Ancelotti, more than anybody else, has been able to manage Real Madrid, the machine that, 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 is, that is Real, in terms of singing from the same song sheet, doing what need, needs to be done, um, passing on those messages from the boardroom. But at, at, at the same time, as incredible a man manager as he is, somehow gets the best of players not playing in their natural positions and takes, whether he, he plugs Carvajal or Chua Meni in, in a centre-back, somehow you sit here and just feel he's going to get it right again. They don't win the Champions League doing that. Well, no. They might win La Liga. Oh, that, right. That's because, because you, 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 right now it seems like Girona's your, your toughest opponent mm -hmm. who we all think is going to fall away. So you might win La Liga, but Real Madrid's not about that, are they? They absolutely are about Champions League. Of course. So they're going to gamble not competing properly in the Champions League because they want to, they want to get a war chest? That, that makes no sense to me. Go on, Frank. I'm sorry, uh, but uh, for the first time of the year, I'm going to disagree with, uh, with Stevie. And uh, I really think that's a clever, clever decision. Um, you know what you have. You know, he knows the dressing room. You know how the dressing room works. He knows that Nacho, Rudiger, or maybe Cavaral or Chouamini can play. So there are four players in the Champions League. Those players can, can be effective as well and, uh, and, uh, and, and do the job. Uh, and he knows that the players are going to come back. And so he's going to have a problem later on if he gets a player, a new player in. Because he, does, he, 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 he will, will be stuck with one, more too, one player too many. And that's the problem that he had that he will face later. And I think it's why he's uh, preventing himself to, uh, to face. He, he knows what he has. He knows that he might be enough. Yeah, of course, he's not sure, 100% sure. But he thinks that it's going to be enough to cope with the Champions League and, uh, and the La Liga and, uh, and doesn't want to jeopardize any uh, spirit, but also competition into the group that will uh, create maybe some, uh, some issues to him and to, uh, and to Real Madrid overall. See, here's, here's the thing. The theory is good. What Frank said there, in theory, makes sense. Mm. Unfortunately, if Real Madrid are playing against Man City in the knockout rounds, and you look at the team sheet and you look at Ellen Haaland up front against Carvajal, I, don't think, I think you're thinking a different thing completely. That, that's kind of my point. The, the issue, the challenge of that, though, Stevie, is who do you bring in in January? Real Madrid are, are linked with Varane, Thiago Silva. Are, are those... But to be fair, only Stevie's it's... linked to Thiago Silva. Well, well, I'm, yeah. I'm, just, yeah. well, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> but are, are, those, are those the players that win? <laughs> are those the centre-backs that win in the Champions League? Right. I'm not sure you get a, a centre-back to turn I... you into Champions League winners in January. Again, I'm not... I'm not I'm, I understand the argument. I'm not saying that you just go and buy a square head, you know. But, but if you use your brains and you can get an experienced guy like Thiago Silva, where you can put him in, in the Champions League, he doesn't have to play in the Liga, you can get away with too many or Carvajal or whoever it is, that's my point. Listen, if, the, if you can't get anybody who's, who's got the experience or who can fit the bill, then fine. 